Jenny was talking about open data, link data. Our next speaker is going to continue on that theme. Ian Sinclair is Head of Public Sector Consulting at IPL, which is a Bath-based for-profit company, I think I'm right in saying. Um, Ian heads IPL's public sector consultant practice and has been helping clients with their information and data management challenges for almost 10 years. He'll be speaking about what digital by default means for your organisation and what skills your people need to have in order to, in order to manage and exploit data in the information age. Combating the data headaches of the digital age. Ian. Thank you. So as I'll kick off by just saying a bit more about IPL, I bet most of you in the room have not heard of us. Um, I'm quite clear here, we're not one of these big system integrators that uh, David was talking about earlier. We're very much in the SME space, southwest of England. We were set up in about in 1979. We came out of aerospace and defense doing mission critical software, basically. Today, most of you in this room, your mobile phones are running off our software. When you go online and do your banking, you're probably using our software. When you drive around the country on the, on the motorways, you're going past our technology. Um, we were all sorts of people in both sectors. Um, I'm from the consulting side of the house, and we're very much around making information an asset for our clients. And we do that in three ways, as you can see here. We do IM, EA, and BPM, and all these come together to make the management of information as an asset. And we have a very clear message that it is not all about technology. It's not about just going out there and buying some wizzy bit of software. It is really all about people and process. So I call my um, talk to you today about the, the combating the data headaches of the digital age. So what do I mean by data headache? I've put some statistics up there. And you can go to the internet and you can find lots of things about this. I think we all realize that data is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, I can't even comprehend what a zettabyte is. Just doing that gives me a headache. I mean, 10 to the power of 21. It's, you just can't comprehend the amount of data that we are creating every year now. And it's just going to go and get worse. And the, the key thing I wanted to point out here is that um, you know, we've, gone from a, we've gone from a time when we were just managing structured data. We could handle that. It was in databases. It was a bit like Moore's Law. We knew it was getting bigger and we could manage it. Now, out of nowhere, really, unstructured data has hit us. From having, we've started off with PCs. We've gone into laptops, tablets, mobile phones, social media. It's just getting worse. And that's much, much harder for us to manage than the old structured data that we were used to. And, you know, we're actually making it worse for ourselves. I mean, I've used the word policy, but this whole digital by default agenda can only mean one thing for us as information professionals, and that is we've got more to manage. We've got to get far smarter at managing all this data that's coming in, and to get the value out of it, and that's the key thing, means we have to have the ability to analyze it and be far cleverer about how we analyze data now. And I, I, I think, actually, uh, we, we need to recognize that Putting all the services online is really great. It's great for the citizen. It cuts the cost to the government. But actually, there's a bit of a hidden cost here because actually all this data is actually has cost you more to manage. And I don't just mean it means we have to buy more servers. I mean it means we need actually more people with specialist skills to be able to look after it. So the message for me is we need to do something about this now. It's not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. And we need to get organized and be able to handle it. And so when we talk about managing it as an asset, what I need you to do is think about how you manage finances within your organizations, how you manage your people, how you manage your property. You have governance structures in there. You have accountability and responsibilities. And it's no different from managing information. And like I said at the beginning, we're not just talking technology here. It's about peoples with the right skills. And that's what EduServe asked me to talk about to you today. So. What I'm going to do is talk about generically with all civil servants, all people in your organizations, the kind of skills we want them to have now and going forward. And then I'll talk a bit more about the more specialist side of things about managing data and doing the analysis. Do you know what 
we're not skilled in information and in management anymore, but we really were. It wasn't that long time ago. Before we had computers, we had registries, didn't we? And you know, and paper used to come in, and it was, it was recorded, it was filed, it went on circulation. But the important thing is, it was controlled. And then we rolled computers out to everybody and thought we could save money here, because we'll let the individual do all that. But what we didn't do was give the individual any training in doing it, or any processes to do it. And now, really, it's quite chaotic. And I'm sure all your organisations are in the same boat, where you've really lost control of your information assets. So there are skills out there, and there are things that we can do. Um, they may not be new, but probably they are new to organisations within the public sector. Because industry has been doing this for a long time, even before you know, this, this data explosion that we're experiencing now. Um, and they've had to do it purely because they've been legally obliged to. Um, you've probably seen in the news, I'm sure, especially in the States, where you know, top executives end up going to jail because they get it wrong where data is concerned. Now, I don't think that's going to happen to any civil servants, but the ICO are now handing out very big fines to government bodies for getting it wrong where data is concerned. So the emphasis is there to make information management everyone's responsibility within your organisations. And the key thing is, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. It requires a cultural change within your organisations. And one of those things is getting away from the mindset that data information is something that the IT department do, which is quite a, quite a common thing. And, and that's back to that history of we've been managing data for a long time in databases, and therefore it's just what IT do. Um, so it does require a cultural shift. And to do that, you're going to have to start educating your people. And we've, we've talked about training already this morning. There is a training bit in there. You know, I know some organisations in the, in the public sector that make people do annual information management training, you know, an online course. It's that kind of thing to reinforce people's behaviours. It's not something we're just going to do as a, do as a one-off. And so there are some important things that your people should be doing to look after your information. And I've put a few examples here. Housekeeping is a really big thing. So how many people... Let's have a test here. How many, show of hands, how many people regularly go through, say, their Outlook or their files and deleting everything they've got? Yeah. It's not many, is it? And the, and the, re and the reason is because there's quite a common perception that storage is cheap, so if you run out of space, well, IT are just going to go and buy some more servers, aren't they? And they probably will. But all we're doing is making the problem worse because we have this tendency to keep things. What we need to do is get people back into the good habits of doing housekeeping. In the old days, if your filing cabinet was full, you had to go and do something about it, and you would go and clear it out and get rid of the stuff you don't need. Another key thing is the ability to tag information so we can find it again in the future. So that's where the whole metadata piece comes in. So when we're creating our Word documents or Excel files, it's really important that we fill in the properties, or if we're using SharePoint or whatever our document management system is, you know, and we're using taxonomies so that in the future when we need to answer that freedom of information request in five years' time, we can actually find all the information that's relevant to the question. And the final one I've got up there is this general thing about quality and everybody understanding that information is an asset to, to to your government department, but to the government as a whole, and they have to value it, and therefore they need to A, care about its use, but ensure that it's, it's fit for purpose. You know, so this isn't about when you know, you're, you're um, talking to a citizen and you're gathering their information and you're just leaping over mandated fields and something because it makes it quicker for you to get it. I mean, that, that information needs to be captured for a reason, and it's getting people to understand that's what they're going to have to do. So... That's the sort of uh, wider generic stuff. But you, ne you still need um, specialists within your organisation to help you manage your information. So I said uh, earlier that, you know, think finance, think property, think HR. You have a governance structure in, in place. You need somebody who's responsible for managing or responsible for your information and data as an asset within your organisation. Because there's so many challenges out there now that have to be dealt with. So here I'm talking about, you know, just providing services to the citizen and how many touch points there are now. 
So for, for me, I could be talking, I could be talking to the government about, or government department about, you know, renewing my tax disc, or maybe I want to renew my passport, or I'm going to talk to the council about my council tax, or my bin hasn't been collected. There's just so many interactions that the citizen has with government departments, and in all sorts of different ways, because we can, you know, we can, um, I could phone them up, I could walk into something, I'm on the internet, maybe I'm going to send them a text, a tweet, this is all different kinds of information that's coming into us, and that's causing us the headache. So here I've talked about the increase in volume, variety, and velocity. And this is the only time I'm going to use the big data phrase, because it's just hype. But this is what you'll see when you hear people talk about that. Because there are so many more devices and ways for people to communicate that naturally that just increases the amount of information that we're going to have to deal with. And because of all these devices, that means there's all lots of different formats of information that we've never had to deal with before. And the speed as well, because most people, most people these days are probably online, and it's far quicker to send a text or type an email on your mobile device than go home and write a letter. So it really is a headache. And like I say, formal governance is the key to managing it. And to give you an idea of how important it is, you know, I'm, I'm working with a, a major council in the southwest at the moment about data governance as part of their information strategy. And on the other hand, my, um, my opposite number in the industry side of our business, he does consultancy, he's out in Saudi Arabia at the moment helping uh, one of their major banks put in a data governance program. Now, this is stuff that's of interest to everybody. Everybody's got to do it all over the globe, whatever their sector is. You know? And one of the key things that I think for for the public sector is, is to learn from um, what they've done in industry is all about customer relationship management. Well, I think you'll probably re recognise more citizen relationship management. But there's maybe a new concept within the public sector because industry has been doing it for years. Because industry wants to make money and industry needs to know the buying habits of the people they're selling to. Well, we want to know how we interact with the citizen and improve the services that we, add, we, that we um, provide to them. So to do this whole management piece is going to require some skills, okay? And this is where you are either going to need people who have additional hats, so you expand their roles, or you may need more professional information management type people to do it. So, for example, we need to assure the quality of the information that we're looking after. So the whole data quality piece would normally be you need people who understand the business information they understand the value of it to the business, they understand when it's wrong, and they understand how to fix it. So that's the whole data quality piece. That's normally you know, a specialist area. And that's what I did when I was in the civil service. You know? And, and, and I'm, going, I'm talking 10 years ago. So this, is, this isn't you know, something really new. And there's things like master data management. So this is about making sure that information is coherent across your organization. So when, you, you know, when, you, when we talk about deriving value out of that information, and you get your intelligence layer, you need to make sure that you're comparing apples with apples. Because if you're not, you're going to be making decisions based on the wrong type, the, the, the wrong information. And then we need to look at actually what we're doing about holding all this information. You know, I've got records management on here. Well, that records management isn't anything new. We've been doing that for years. But records management in the digital age is something quite different because of the volume of information that people have and are keeping. And it's, you know, because of this, this concept that storage is cheap, it's quite easy, a, lot, a lot easier to say, well, I'm just going to make this record because I can't be bothered to make the decision about whether I need to get rid of it or not. And so then how do we get, make sure we are keeping the right things and we're keeping the things that have value going forward? Archiving is something that we need to consider. You know? We don't want to fill our live systems with information that people don't need to access regularly. You know, we need to understand our assets how often they need to be accessed, whether we can you know, stick them on tape somewhere, whether we put them in the cloud, hand it over to a third party. But it's it all about maintaining the value of that information and driving down costs. And the really difficult thing is the whole digital con continuity issue about, well, how do we actually maintain access to that information in the future? So, you know, we're all, we're all familiar with the 30-year rule and government documents get published. Well, how is that information that's being stored today going to be readable and usable in 30 years' time? Are we still going to be able to access Microsoft Word files in you know, 2013? 
Don't know. There is an answer at the moment, but there, there are things that you can do to at least prepare yourselves as best you can at the moment. And the third key factor here is around enterprise search. And this is very, very important. It ties back to having the right metadata because you need to be able to find things in the future because there's far more information that we are storing. It's harder to actually find the things of value. So you need people who are, have some sort of expertise about enterprise search and can ensure, again, when you know that freedom of information request comes in, that you can answer it within the 20 working days because you can find all that information that's relevant to the question you're trying to answer. So we've now, we're now managing our data as an asset, but now we want to drive the true value out of it. So we need to be able to analyze it. And now we're looking far broader than what we would call traditional management information. You know, so we get a monthly report, a quarterly report, an annual report, as we've always done in the past. You know. Probably nobody actually looks at it and it ends up as shelfware. Well, now we have the technology and skills to start doing clever things with information, looking at trends, looking maybe into the future and doing predictions, managing the performance of our department and how we're spending the taxpayers' money. And what we can do is actually tell the story with data. So instead of me having to dig out five years' worth of reports and, and go through them to try and understand what's happened, we can have some sort of user interface where you can build in data and you can look at this year's data and you can add in last year's and two years, three years ago and start to see pictures emerging. And a key part of the skills that are needed is how that information is visualised to your end user. Okay. So there are things about like you know, interactive dashboards. So depending on what the user wants to do, you know, they could just look at if they've, they've got something on their screen, it's a bit more than just pie charts and um, bar charts, then they can drill into however many levels they need to. Or we can do clever things like heat maps and bore maps, and there's all wizzy things that we can do with information now to make it easier for those people who need to, to consume it to understand its meaning and its value. We can layer data, and a common example of that, you know, is using GIS, mapping data. And I was actually at um, Bristol yesterday, and they were showing me what they'd done with um, all the maps of Bristol City that they've got going back over two, 300 years, and you can layer it so you can actually go to any part of the city and then drill down through what it looked like through history. Even, say, if you wanted to go back to World War II and see what was bombed, they've got all the bomb sites, and then you can drill in, you can click on something, and the photo comes up to show you what the buildings were like when they got bombed. You know, that's just one example of how we can exploit the, the um, public data for the, you know, for the interest of, of the citizen. And then the important thing is, you know, it's, it's not just internally within your organizations, it's as you were saying, it's about open data and it's making that information usable for everybody. So skills required, you know, it is more now about analytics, you need analytical people, probably with a mathematical bent these days to do this. And, and people I've called information designers, and I guess what I mean by that is, people who are designing these user interfaces need to have more of a, a um, graphic design bent because it is about how you present information to, the, to, the, to, to your people and to the citizen so they can best exploit it. So just to finish then, the three key messages are this isn't going to go away, it's only going to get worse, so we've got to do something about it, and it is about how you manage your information as an asset and putting the right mechanisms in place. And there's an awful lot that can be learned from what's been done in the private sector, in industry, because they've been doing this for a long time. Look after your data, it will look after you. <laughs>